And you want to you want to choose the option that has yellow at at least 50%. Red is bad, yellow is good, green is great. Okay, so that's good. And what information do we get? So we can get iron, frogs, and bones here. The scout score uses the combined stats of all the golems in the track. So just the more goblins you have with higher higher stats, whatever they may be, that's the highest scout score. Higher war, it matches is essentially the higher their war stat, the higher their war stat. And same with trade and same with faith. So Petty Fog here has a high faith stat, therefore the high the faith stat for this track is higher. That's basically it. If you want a higher scout, just put on more goblins. That's effectively it. It's not super complicated there. Ideally, you'll get the resources uh, discovered, but if you can't, that's fine. We can always just send them back. Okay, here's a good one. In this forest, we got shiny, which is a very valuable resource that you can only get by tracks such as this. Berries and meat, which means this place has food. So we're definitely going to want to send a raid there. We're actually going to wait for everyone to get home before sending that off. Because we sent our war chief, our, our warlord. There we go, there they are. And the warlord is probably the best person to send on raid tracks. Because they can just go alone and not uh, really worry about it. Because they don't really do anything super productive. So, may and they have a high war stat. So, may as well. And we have reached a warning for a goblin's warrants for the our warrants being near capacity. So now is the time to just build more warrants. Connect more places if you can. This is a good opportunity to uh, connect bridges and stuff. So, uh, different hexes on the world map. You have three main hexes. You've got mountains, grasslands, and forests. Uh. I believe what hex they are, or what terrain type they are, has an effect on what resources they have. You are more likely to get stone, rocks, and iron from a mountain, more likely to get food from a grassland in a forest, more likely to get herbs from a grassland maybe, more likely to get logs from a forest, etc. I'm not certain on the exact percentages, but I'm pretty sure that there is some grain of, of stuff there. Now, we can raid this forest for supplies. And we will gain them. The thing is, we will lose uh, the information about what resources we have there. So if we sent a raid track there right now, then when it comes back, we will have to scout it again in order to see the resources that it has again. Here is the thing, though. That does not prevent you from raiding it again. And it is very likely that it will maintain the same resources. Now, Shiny can come and go. Shiny, if we raid it now and get that Shiny, then that Shiny might disappear in the next raid. It might not become available. And it might show up in this... If we raid this mountain then next time we raid it, there might be shiny there. So shiny comes and goes. Everything else, I think, is fixed. I could be wrong here, but I'm pretty sure any free time we raid this vacant forest, we're going to get berries and meat. So raiding these locations is a great strategy for maintaining your resources. Because the, your village, the place you have settled, will not support you forever. You cannot survive off your village alone. You do need to go into the world map. Also on the world map, you have things such as the monolith, which is a, a religious site. You can send holy treks there full of faith goblins, such as your elder, to pray to your gods. That will get you juju, which you can use to cast spells in the spell book up here. You can select the god you want, the select the spell you want and effect and just click on it and it's cast we did that earlier with iridin to regain to uh make all of our elder resources regrow their supplies then you have dungeons which is effectively a raid trek there will be dangers 
and traps and all this stuff in there. Some of your goblins may die, uh, but uh, you will generally get more man-made resources, such as tools and weapons and stuff like that. Also out in the world map somewhere are settlements, human settlements, elven settlements, hamlets, stuff like that. Those are locations where you can either raid them, you can send holy treks to them to try and convert them to your faith and gain favor with your gods, or you can raid them for your supplies. This will affect your diplomatic relationship with them. If we can encounter one of those, then we can explore that further. For now, though, uh, all we have is the lands immediately around us, and I don't want to send out too many scouts, just because we, uh don't have a lot of available peons. This does open up uh, the thing about heroes. You can recruit heroes by building the tavern. Uh, as you can see, it requires iron tools along with planks, cloth, and stone. So a little difficult to get. We can get it around this time once we get that blacksmith up and running. Tavern will allow you to recruit heroes, which you get by using the gold you've been saving up by selling everything you can to the traders. You can hire these heroes for a set number of years, and you can send them out on treks. And they will lead the treks. You can only send one hero per trek, but they will lead the treks, give certain bonuses based on their abilities. And the good thing about the heroes is that they do nothing in the village. They don't work. They don't uh, salvage. They don't gather resources. They don't do anything. If an enemy is in the village, they will probably try and fight it, uh, so you can keep them around as guardians. But other than that, they are not very productive. So you can send a hero out alone on a trek to just raid a tile and collect resources. So you effectively have a free raid trek just all the time. So if we can get a hero, then we can just send out endless raid treks to that tile full of food, and we can get everything we need from it. First, though, we need that blacksmith. So if we can build that blacksmith, then we can get iron tools, and we can get so much more. Here we have our warlord, so we're going to send him to raid this tile. Because, again, he doesn't do much. I'm not entirely sure what he does, but it's nothing of particular note, so we may as well send him alone on a raid track. And this dungeon has... Herbs, frogs, rocks, and berries. Okay, so no tools, unfortunately. So this dungeon might not be worth it. So this is why you want to select a warlord with a high war stat like Megs here. Then you can plunder and you still have a very good chance of success. And just like that, we got 200 berries plus 30 meat, which is another food source. Berries are your primary food source, but meat is kind of a secondary one. I'm not sure if you can survive on meat alone, but it is very useful still. So we need to claim and disband this party, but we can immediately send them out again. We will need to reform the party, but we can send them out again, and we can raid this location for rocks, and just like that, we have more berries. Bam, 300 berries. So yeah, now we're in the white for peons, which I'm guessing means we have a good number of peons for a village this size. We gotta try not to, gotta try to, got to try to not exceed 15 peons. And looks like we unlocked building upgrades. So buildings you can upgrade are the grand hall, the storage, and the warrens. I think maybe one or two other things. I think it's mainly just those three, though. So what those do is upgrading the Grand Hall will make it so that you can have four breeders instead of just two. I believe it also in in increases the total number of housed goblins. In upgrading the storage increases the number, the amount of storage that it can hold, as well as increases the haulers from two to four. And upgrading the warrens just increases the number of housed goblins. There's nothing else to that. The thing about upgrading, though, is that if you upgrade this warrens here, or this storage here, it does not upgrade all of them. It only upgrades that specific one. So, if I just hit this... Okay. 
So this will tell you what it does. It increases two to four health, increases health, heath radius, and then la 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 la. So it looks like you cannot actually begin upgrading until you have the resources. So that is actually pretty handy. That's good to know. That's good to know. Yeah, here we can see this increases slots. Uh, it doesn't say it, but it does also increase the breeders. We don't have the shiny for that. Shiny is a valuable resource because as well as that it is also used for other things such as a shaman hut. So if you can get shiny, you want to get shiny. All right, and we need uh, the best trade goblins we can get here that are not 30 years old, which means, unfortunately, you get the help. And what I'm going to do here is set it so that one of you makes tools and one of you makes weapons. Is anyone actually bad? You know what? Rock girl. You're not supposed to be there anyways, uh, but you know what, Rock Girl, you are now doing this, so we have a good efficiency there, and yeah, we're gonna do that, so Rock Girl makes weapons, Havala makes tools, and hopefully that balances out. The th they t both take bones, they take bones and uh, logs, we just hit winter so we can pull you guys out actually. Uh, we are a little bit under uh, firewood, hopefully. I think we can last. Hopefully we can last. Like with the Warlord, this uh, the Elder doesn't really do much, so we may as well. Um, ultimately, selecting which god you pray to will not affect what voodoo you get. If you pick Sagarite, I believe he has, a pass he has a passive that gives you extra voodoo if you pray with him. Or extra juju if you pray with him. However... If I were to pray for Iridin right now, then that would ultimately gain me nothing. Because I'm already at max favor with him. Uh, praying for a specific god effectively just increases your favor with them. So, if I pray for Moongast, then this will increase our favor with him and get more piety there. I don't think this affects the amount of juju you get. I do want to make the tavern right now, but... I feel like I should wait until we have at least some weapons and tools stockpiled. Just because we do have a low on uh, a demand for weapons. Although that just might be our uh, our warlords, so maybe not. You know what? Yeah, yeah. In the interest of teaching, I shall place a tavern down. If this gets in the way, then I will remove it. But for now, I think we should be okay. So yeah, you see our piety increased with him by 5, so not a lot, but we gain 20 juju from that. And we can spend that on any god spell. It does not need to be Moongasts. If you remember, we got berries and meat from this vacant forest. And now the resources are not scouted. We don't know what's there, but we can still raid it. So, let's raid it again and see what we get. Also, apparently you can, uh... Apparently you can do holy tracks without a god selected. I kind of did that accidentally. We'll see what happens there. Okay, I accidentally opened myself up to a new land of attack here, so... I'm gonna place an additional guard tower here. I already got one here, but may as well do that. We are out of firewood, which is a concern. Okay, looks like it just went back to Moongast. Okay. And so here we go. We so if you recall, this guy did. We did not scout the resources available in this location last time. We got shiny berries and meat. This time, okay, we got. Uh, it is different. Okay, so so the meat changed. We did get the shiny and the berries. Interesting. So they seem slightly consistent, maybe slightly inconsistent. Now this. So this is a skeleton king. It is effectively a skeleton boss. It, of sorts. It's tougher than the others, stronger than the others. So if you get to the point of, of having one of these guys show up and you don't have uh, very good defenses set up, you might want to change that as soon as possible. Thankfully, he's alone. So we, we can probably handle him. Yeah, we're alright. We're alright. We can handle this.
We're okay. Alright, so it looks like I have a lot of sick goblins. I need to find medicine. We can make medicine. Unfortunately, we don't have the building do that just yet. So this is uh, the building need to make medicine. Uh, it does require iron tools, which we are currently putting into the tavern over here. So we can't build it yet because we're trying to build that. But two things about the laboratory. One, this is the reason why you need to raid. It requires berries and herbs. Yeah, you need berries and herbs. Both things that can be difficult to come by if you are surviving off of your main home village alone. They are much easier to come by in raid tracks. Just look at how many berries we have right now. And we probably have we have a good number of herbs as well, so we could easily make medicine. Secondly, I think the laboratory is bugged somewhat or not completely understood by the player base just yet because for some reason the laboratory despite being under the faith tab uh, functions better with high trade stat goblins so if, if you are placing down a laboratory you want to put high trade stat goblins in there generally you want to put in goblins with high stats that match the tab they are under so high war goblins in the war tab high faith goblins in the faith tab the laboratory seems to be the one that stands out there. Maybe leave a suggestion in the Discord saying change the laboratory to faith if you find that it is indeed trade focused instead of faith focused. If I can get it built in this game, I will test that myself. So, the war hall and the faith hall. The war hall has several interesting commands here. Vigilant increases the goblin's vision. If you look at this red ring, around the uh, watchtowers. If you click that, then it expands. I'm not sure if that means that they'll respond to things further, or if they'll shoot things further, or if there's a major difference, but that's the situation. Then you have cautious. Goblins won't stray too far out of the village. That's handy if you got goblins that like to wander far away into the village in the middle of winter. And finally, you got bloodthirsty. Goblins prioritize enemies with low health. So if you're fighting a lot of enemies and you just want to take down the ones that are weakest, you can click on that. Personally, I think I mostly go for Vigilance and not the others, but uh, it really is a uh, personal choice situation. As for this, I think this just shows uh, what level of faith you are with your gods and not much else. It could hold spells, it could do the spell book thing, but uh, so far so no. So I'm noticing that our kindlers and our lumber mill are not getting logs and probably not the blacksmith either yeah not the blacksmith either i'm guessing that is because i put down all of these warrens and the goblins recognize that we have an overcrowding problem so they are prioritizing on putting the logs in the warrens first once these warrens are done they'll probably start putting logs into the blacksmith and uh those other things that's my guess Okay, yeah, the warrens have been built, and so logs are being delivered again. So it looks like, if, if it looks like logs aren't being delivered anymore, it's probably because you got something going on that requires logs more. Like, building warrens to fight overcrowding. Oh, okay, we have encountered a village full of dwarves. So, as a result... Uh, we now have diplomatic relations with them. We can hit uh, influence and diplomacy, and we can now interact with them. We can give them a compliment. We can insult them. We can give them money. And we can request a favor, or declare war, and so much more. What I'm currently interested in is potentially opening up a trade route with them. So first, we need to scout them out to see what they have and what they want. Alright, so... They are selling cloth, meat, iron, ale, hides, and logs. And they are buying shiny hemp, stone, and beer. Okay, so I think we can, I think we can accommodate some of that. So, 
to trade with someone. We hit the trade icon. You select your trade prep. I'm gonna set the trade trance as the leader with a couple of other goblins just to uh, increase our score and uh, increase our carrying capacity. There is a set number of stuff that they can carry. We're going to form the party and we're going to bring our trade offerings. This opens up a menu where you can select how much of what stuff you want to bring. Now they value stone more than hemp so we're gonna give them a good chunk of stone. So let's say 60 stone. And then a little bit of hemp. And we only have two shiny, so we're not going to give them that. We could also send them with gold. But we want to hold on to that gold for now, so we're going to go with this. We're going to send that trade party. And now we, it's just a waiting game to see how they respond. We don't have control over what we buy and what we over what we get from them. But we will get a little bit of everything. And just because he hasn't awoken yet, I but I'm, I don't want to be caught by surprise, I'm going to awaken Golden Top and just start praying to him. All right, here we go. This is our trade. So we can, we have three strategies here. We can be kind. Uh, this will effectively skew the trade in the favor of the dwarves. So we will get less and they will get more. And try and be diplomatic, uh, which will give us attempt to give us an even share, or we can try and be aggressive, which will give us more value than them. So we have about a 50-50% chance if we're diplomatic. I believe this will increase the higher your trade stat. So I'm gonna go for diplomatic. Kind would be the better option, I think, but we do want to get something of value here. So we're gonna give, give this a shot. Thankfully, we're good. He, his, his opinion of us improved slightly. And we gained five logs, a bunch of gold, and a little bit of other stuff. Not a lot. We didn't bring a lot of resources to trade with him, so we can't we didn't get a lot in return. <laughs> okay, that was spooky. So if we go back to the world map. We see that the resources are gone. We cannot, uh, I don't think we can trade with them again until we scout it out. Or at the very least, we need to scout with them again. If their deals have changed at all, we gotta scout them out again to see what's going on. Eventually, we can ally with them, and I believe that makes it so that they uh, don't hide their deals from us, and we can just always see what they have. But for now, we just gotta scout them out every time we go. All right, and the tavern has been completed. This is where we spend our hard-earned gold to recruit heroes. So, we open up the tavern, we see we have six slots. We can recruit six heroes. And we can choose from one of these four. Silk Rain, Lin, Dako, and Stormbane. They each have their own individual ability, as you can see here. They also have, excuse me, they also have their own uh, stats. So Silk Rain is good with trade, as is Lin. Thako is better with faith, as with Stormbane, and so on. You can also see their price and for how long we hire them. Now, personally, I think I'm going to hire Silk Rain because permanently, currently we have our warlord raiding nearby uninhabited tiles for supplies. Silk Rain can do that even better. So she, we can just constantly send Silk Rain out for en for endless raids against neighboring tiles. We can ne we will never run out of food because Silk Rain just keeps getting more effectively. Uh, this one decreases chance of chance of encountering an enemy. Thako increases the amount of faith gained from treks. And Stormbane increases sex chance of holy tracks. So I don't think I'm too fussed about any of those. We do have a lot of excess money, so I'll get Thako, because our elder is also going out on holy tracks right now. So we may as well get those done. So here. We've been sending Megs out on raids to neighboring tiles. Now we can just send out Silk Rain. So you place this hero there, you'll notice I cannot put Thako in this party at all. 
We can only send one hero per track. I can fill up this entire slot thing with more goblins to assist, and that would increase her possibilities and likelihoods and like. But I, I find that heroes are pretty good on their own uh, with most things. Maybe not like in attacking people, but if it's an empty tile, then they can handle it on their own just fine. So we're gonna send Silk Rain over to raid those mountains. We found a farm with an unscouted enemy. As I said, we are sending Silk Rain to raid these mountains. So you know what? Let's actually send. Let's actually oh, send God. Thaco to scout this area. And we'll give you one peon. Oh wait, no. Uh, change track. Scout. As someone is here, we don't know who. We do know that they uh, sell firewood and buy iron and medicine. So this could be a potential trading partner in the future. We just don't know who they are yet. And uh, this, in 41 minutes, real time, we will gain new contracts. This is a long time, unfortunately, but it is, uh, it is what it is. So in 41 minutes, we can recruit new heroes. That is to say, in 41 minutes, we will get a new selection of heroes. We can still recruit these two at any time. Alright, and since the tavern is now built, I believe we can safely build the laboratory. I'm gonna do that. And put our iron tools to use there. And hopefully that'll uh, give us the medicine we need to cure all of our poor sick goblins. We still don't know who they are, huh? Unlamed. Okay, that might be a bit of a bug or just random commoners. I'm not sure. We could raid them for some of those supplies. That is something we can do. Alright, here's our laboratory. Now let's test this out. So, high faith. Efficiency 20. High trade. Efficiency 38. So yeah, despite being under the faith tab, the laboratory is in fact still trade focused unfortunately. So we're just gonna have to do that and these guys will make medicine for us which would hopefully uh, help cure some of our poor sick goblins. So here's the cool thing about Moongast. Your remain has something similar to this as well. You can spend Juju gain champions. Now this is so far limited specifically to Moongast and Fury Main. Fury Main gives you Berserkers but Moongast allows you to summon up to four champions per temple. In this case, we got a Grizz, who is a Necromancer, and he will summon skeletons to fight on our side. We can send him on... He can, we can send him on treks, we can keep him in the village to help defend the place, and we can cast this spell once every while. Effectively, this, this circle needs to fill up again. Once this circle fills up, then we can cast that again and get another Necromancer. Now, I do believe the Necromancers still age like normal. This is a three-year-old Necromancer, so he is not even adult. I believe he will still die at 30, 35-ish. We'll have to see about that one. I could be wrong. Maybe they're ageless and just die when killed. I'm not sure. But, that's the current action. That, that's the Necromancer. You remain as a Berserker. Those are the only two gods that have champions. All right, here we have the barracks. This is your army producing structure. You can pick two types of units here. I believe they might be independent. So yeah, you can choose which one you place and have them both in the same one. You got warriors, which uh, are better, which help with uh, raid treks and scouts, which help with scouting. I'm guessing they get some kind of boost to their scat, uh, scouting skill. Warriors will also help you in combat in the village. I'm assuming scouts do as well to some degree. I'm not entirely sure how much, but yeah. Yeah, let's get rid of these guys. They're not great, but yeah. If you want to train up a proper army, the barracks is the way to do it. A proper army or dedicated scouts, the barracks is the way to do it. It is located right here in the war tab. There's also the guard tower, which effectively just makes melee versions of the guards 
uh, here in the watchtowers. Now, these guys are melee. They are not ranged. You can place them down and it will protect, patrol this general area and protect it. I do believe they require iron tools to function, though. The stockades is a structure that when you place down, uh, you can place goblins in it and they will go around beating lazy goblins and rioting goblins and bringing some order back to your village. They, uh... I believe they have to be a war focused, but yeah, this. So this, if you can, uh, if you if you're having like riding troubles, the stockade can be a good building to go for. But I believe that despite the fact that they have a relatively small circle of influence, they do still wander around the entire village. Basically, if a goblin is riding over here, and you have a stockade over here, they will still go over here in order to make the in order to beat the goblin potentially lock them away inside the stockades and teach them a lesson and yeah there is some other stuff a voodoo hut shaman hut if you can put this down they will this they will uh go to these red gravestones and prevent them from spawning undead you get an achievement if you can do that for all gravestones in a single winter but we are Pretty much reaching endgame here. I have not actually gotten this far before. At least not very, at least not much further than this. You can make beer with the brewery. You can get pigs with the pigsty. Butcher that slaughters pigs to produce meat and hides. Workshop that produces wagons. I have literally never been able to make this. Never gotten around to it. This, uh, you can create wagons. This will allow your tracks to carry more stuff. And, of course, you can explore your entire world map uh, through Trex. And that is effectively it. That is effectively Goblins of Eldestone. This has been a four-hour recording session for me. It is late. It is past my bedtime. So I think I'm going to call it here and edit this down as best I can. This is probably going to be at least two episodes. Probably more. What I'm probably going to be doing is, if you want... There will be a there will be an unlisted link somewhere in the description below of my entire four hour playthrough, Un, uncut, unedited, with exception to like cutting out like breathing noises and background noises you don't need to hear. But like, if you if you are follow my tips and advice here and you're still not getting the results, you can watch the entire uncut playthrough if you really want to. To see what I did, maybe I did some small thing that you didn't, that I didn't bring up, uh, because if you know something, it's hard to accept the fact that other people don't know it. So maybe I've done something that I just innately assume other people know to do, and I'm wrong about that. It's entirely possible. So. Link to that will be in the description down below. That might be cut up into two episodes as well, just because this is four hours long. And, yeah. In the meantime, I hope that this little tutorial guide thing has been helpful to some degree. My name has been Tam Troll. This is Goblins of Eldestone. Now, 1.0, full release. Available on Steam. Be sure to check the Discord, leave a positive review, all that good stuff. And I will see you next time. Farewell!